This ball is crushed. Man, what a shot. Hey, everybody. Welcome to Hit or Die Podcast with your hosts, Jake Saldati and Chad Rothford. Um, quick thing on that. You know Trent Alice from Central? So he called me um, he called me Chad at practice the other day. That's a no. That's a no-no. He's like, hey, Chad. And I say, I go, what did you say? He's like, oh, Coach Roth. I mean, and then he did it today when we were hitting uh, earlier today. He, he said it when we were leaving. He's like, see you later, Chad. Or he said, thanks, Chad. And he goes, oh, crap. He's like, Coach Roth. He goes, you know why I do it? And I was like, okay, go ahead. He goes, like, well, when I listen to the podcast, you always say, your host, Jake Zella and Chad Rothford. So I just think of you as Chad Rothford. I, hey, I get it. So should I start saying Coach Rothford and Coach Saldati? I'm not a coach anymore. <laughs> I, I don't know. Are, 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 are you always a coach? Does you ever you're always a coach. leave that? You're yeah. always a coach. Did you put him on blast? Yeah, I told him I would. <laughs> Welcome. Pod Nation. Shout out. Um, big thank you to uh, Nick Papagni. Uh, invited both of us to be guest hosts on his show Thursday last night. Uh, that would be the 12th of August. And uh, Roth had city practice, running a little late, and couldn't make it. But I uh, feel like one of us should be there. I have plenty of time now on my hands, and uh, it was fun, man. I uh, just wanted to say thanks to Nick uh, for doing it. It's so different. Live radio is much different than this setting. Because mm-hmm. um, I know that if I need to edit this, <laughs> I, I can edit this. That is go, 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 go. and, and uh, It was good. I got in the car around 520 and turned it on. Uh, you were talking about some of the recruiting stuff, and you guys sound good. You sound real good. Matty J, you better watch out for your job, man. <laughs> I guess I shouldn't say that either because then I won't have hit or die either. No, so. no, we'll always have hit or die. Uh, no, it's fun. It's fun to do. You know, it it's different because usually, you know, I kind of will we'll direct traffic a little more with this, especially like with Bush Leagues with six guys. Mm. So when, when Pags is kind of steering the ship, it's a little different, you know, waiting to see where he's going to take it. But it's, it's fun, man. I enjoyed it. And, uh, yeah, if he wants to do it again, we're, we're always open to it. He knows. And uh, I just wanted to say thanks. I think his podcast of that show is out. Go check that out on iHeartRadio app. And uh, go ahead and follow Hit or Die on Instagram at Hit or Die, Twitter at Hit or Die Podcast. Go to YouTube again. The challenge. Subscribe. Hit the button. That's all you got to do. Just hit the button and leave. Chad really wants that tattoo, I think. I really don't. That's why I, you know what? I'm challenging you guys even more. That's why I said it. You because you know it's not. I happen. know you guys can't do it. <laughs> well, you guys can't. I wouldn't say they can't. Maybe no, there's I'm not gonna, enough no, out there that. I'm going to say it. Okay. You can't do you it. Know, you should be like, you know what? Fuck you, Chad. I'm going to go hit subscribe. <laughs> I want to I wanna see that tattoo. Then we'll go, we'll go live, hit or die during the tattoo. We'll film it. Yeah, we'll yeah. film it. Yeah. I'm going to we'll go tell a, a thousand friends. I'm going to go tell a thousand friends to go. Well, we know subscribe. well more than a thousand people listen to yeah, this. Yeah, that's so. true. You know what? It, yeah, it's weird how that is, too, because for me, I like watching YouTube. I mm-hmm. watch a lot of YouTube. And and I listen to it in the car. Right. And I know there's just there's way more people that listen than watch. And it's just weird to me because I like to watch. Yeah. Whether it's what, you know, Joe Rogan or any other podcasts that I watch, I I just prefer to watch it. So I don't really watch this because, again, I've, you know, I do all the finished stuff. So, it, but I mean, for me, it just like visually seeing it. So, yeah. But yeah, more people tend to listen. So that's cool too. Take, we'll take it. Make sure you hit subscribe and go, uh, give a podcast five stars on iTunes. Go follow and, uh, subscribe on Twitter and, uh, Instagram as well. And if you haven't yet, go get our last episode with Brock Jones. Uh, I've heard nothing but good things about it. It's fun, man. Um, a lot of the guys out at the baseball field were, you know, like, dude, that was really good. You know, listen to Brock and his story. So, um, and it was for us too, you know, it was one of our favorite ones. Um, cause so. younger guys tend to be a little more shy. Not, I mean, he's not yeah. that young. He's got a little more life experience in D one baseball and obviously the school he's at and playing in the PAC 12 and doing interviews, you know, mm-hmm. post game stuff. But you know, it, it was, it was definitely fun to sit and talk to him for a guy that neither of us had met before. Mm-hmm. Uh, it was a good, definitely had a different perception of him. Yeah, absolutely. Well, that comes with the territory, yeah. I guess, of, uh, I'm, I'm pretty bad about first impressions, I'll admit. Judgmental? Very much so. 
a bit judgmental or like, yeah, I just, you know. So what was your first impression of me? Of you? Yeah. Well, I didn't have a first. I was sure you fine. Did. No, you. sure you did. No, I was fine with you. You had one though. You had one. Yeah, like, but I didn't. It wasn't bad. I wanted you to come to Madeira. No, before that, <laughs> before that though, like I was at Clovis West. We still didn't really know each other. Are we you, talked though when we. Yeah, I you know, guys. I know, but like we, I knew you were a good guy and everything. That was my first impression. I didn't have anything right. bad about you until I, you I came only, and coached with me. I, <laughs> <laughs> I only had one of you because that's of what I've heard. Like I'd heard stuff about you and your dad. And yeah, go figure. No, I, I really did. No, I, like, I know. I, mean, I told you. About about I, I, I told you. Like, oh yeah, the Rothfords, and I was like, I don't know who they are. Yeah, it's because we say it like it is, and, and it uh, can hurt us. It's pro and a con. Yeah, you've had some moments, mm-hmm. I guess, with other people, but so I was waiting for that, you know, like especially with your dad at Clovis West. I was waiting to hear, uh all this stuff that did followed him there, mm-hmm. and I couldn't have been. It couldn't have been any further than from one. And maybe he changed a little bit. I don't know. No, nope. but I didn't see any of it. It's no different than I'll be some of the stuff I heard about Coach Batesel. Oh, yeah. You know what I mean? Like, I heard a lot of stuff about Coach Batesel. This, that, this, that. He's, you know, is a coach, this, and then players say things. And I couldn't have been, they, they couldn't have been more yeah. wrong, I, I felt. And even with my background with him and experience, I was fucking way off. Yeah. Um, I learned a lot, you know, being around him and. We, we left that day. We've become really close. Yeah, absolutely. Like I, I never would have thought I'm this close with Coach Batesall. Yeah. You know? No, it's, uh, it's awesome. It's, really, I, it's crazy. I remember leaving that day that we recorded thinking, like, we, who, these people are so wrong. Mm-hmm. Like, how could they have missed this? Yeah. I mean, because he coaches maybe a certain way. Well, that's whatever. That's part of his job, you know? Yeah. Uh, I, yeah. I thought the Degrees and rings. Yeah. People a little off on that one. Yeah. Um. Did you watch any of the Field of Dreams last night? I watched a little bit of it. Um, you know, I wasn't on the radio show watching it at the same time like you. Um, I, I saw a little bit in the coach's office after practice. Uh, I got to see Judge hit a home run, and then uh, um, he followed that up with another one. Yeah, he hit another one, um, and then I went. I was on my way home, and that's why I was listening to you guys. Um, but I mean, it looked amazing um, when you posted them. How they came out? That was pretty sick. How they came out of the cornfield. Um, but yeah, it seemed like a great, a great atmosphere and, uh, you know, a good opportunity and hopefully it continues. Yeah. Hearing the music in the background and (laughs) goosebumps, like watching Cosner from the back come out through the corn and, you know, you just, again, you hear the music and it's, dude, it was friggin' awesome. Mm -hmm. And then as he's getting out towards the, towards the infield and getting closer, the players come out through and it just, Mm -hmm. it looks really cool. And, uh. I bet they had chills walking through there. Mm-hmm. I would have. I would. I had chills watching it. And uh, you know, it brought back a lot of good memories. While that's not my favorite baseball movie, it it's is kind of slow. It, but it is one that I. It's I a good enjoy, movie, but it's course. really slow. Um, it was really neat to see it. I, 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 I haven't gone back and watched the, uh, the Field of Dreams yet since seeing that. But I feel like too, like that's a waste to just be one and done with that thing. Mm-hmm. You know, I guarantee you that made money. If I were playing on another team last night, I'd have been bummed out because yeah. nobody's watching us play unless you're in the in the ballpark. Yeah, I guarantee you, all eyes were on that, and it was it came down to a freaking walk off bomb. Yep, like it was. It couldn't have been more perfect. And I think make it a series of three games where you can maybe do, you know, a couple day night deals or, mm-hmm. or I, I don't know, I don't know, something to think about. Yeah, I think you had you had a pretty good idea. They do a bunch of college tournaments, right? Making yeah, or like how the the preseason there's always like a college preseason tournament where you know we talk Stanford and Arkansas mm-hmm. are going to the um, one in Texas, the one in Texas, and uh, they normally used to do one in Minnesota at the old Minnesota indoor. Uh, I know they did one at uh, and then Tropic. Not is it no not Tropicana uh, the Astros, right? They do, yeah, they do. Yes, you're right. You're right. Um, the Big 12 teams get in that. Yeah. Think. So I thought, why not, you know, use that to their advantage in uh, the Field of Dreams and have a, a tournament out there with. Yeah, that would be know, sweet. Some of the big the Big 10 teams. Yeah, or no, that would be you know? that would be cool to do. I Yeah, I think it would. I think it was a hit. Mm-hmm. I think it went really well. I think people really enjoyed it. I, for one, and I said it last night, um, I was genuinely surprised. Like, it was not what I thought it was going to be. 
Uh, I, it, the ballpark looks sweet. The way they did the fence, the scoreboard, uh, dude, the hats, the yeah, wool, yeah, like the, the looked, uniforms. It, cool. it really was a great tribute, mm -hmm. and I would love to see more of that. I think it brought people backwards. It went backwards a little bit, and yeah. uh, it, it was fun. It was just fun to see that. It almost made me feel like a kid. Yeah, and uh, yeah, the tournament I did be great. I think to utilize it would be awesome, and I think people would go. Mm -hmm. You know, you build it, they will come, and uh, yeah, people will come. It 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 again. It looks sweet. Um, I have to go watch Phil the Dreams now. Um, you know, there was some bombshell news locally in our area. Bombshell. After seeing Twitter last night, maybe it's not so much bombshell anymore. But uh, JD Sales moving on to. Clovis West uh, mm -hmm. to assist at uh, Clovis West with Golden Eagles and Coach Patrick and his uh, John's going to follow on over and, and I'd heard Coach Falco is also coming mm -hmm. too. Um, any idea who who fills in at Memorial? I don't know, Jake Saudati. So I'll be honest, I've I, it's been yeah, it's been brought up. Mm -hmm. And, uh, well, can I hit on the JD thing real quick? Sure. Because uh, some people yeah, are probably yeah, you like, didn't get the chance to talk about it. Some, talk people, some people are probably like wondering why he did what he did, and and he's going to Clovis West. And uh, the thing is that um, at San Joaquin Memorial, even though it's a private school, there's no retirement benefits. You know, so yes, he's there doing that, and um, he's always wanted to go back to Clovis West. That's that's always been his plan. You know, if if you know that circle and everything, you know, J.D., that's always been his plan is to go back to Clovis West. KP's got Tyler there right now. He's doing a lot of traveling, um, you know, wants somebody there that could help be like the co guy that can take over when he's not there, um, you know, when he's traveling with Tyler and stuff. So um, the opportunity arose where he can get a job in Clovis Unified. So and he just got married, by the way. Congrats, J.D. Yeah. Um the opportunity came now he has retirement now he has benefits you know stuff like that um and he's going to be back at his alma mater and he's going to be the co-head coach um until kp's ready to, to um to get out of there and i know kp's not ready yet but it's just it's something that's been in the works you know that's why when somebody was like it's a bombshell like if you know that inner circle yeah, you've you talked know to in the past you know that was eventually gonna happen at some point um so that's that's the main reason you know and then you know a lot of what sucks is a lot of the baggage that went with jd at memorial is is now carrying over to clovis west which you know i know kp you coach with kp and you know being there we know clovis west has never been that type of program to recruit guys and uh, not deliberately no not guys. deliberately no i mean i could tell you while i was there that didn't go on and it was it didn't go on when i was there we had guys leaving yeah Clovis West yeah. uh, when I was there. So um, Clovis West has always kind of been known for that because they're like smack dab in the middle of Fresno Clovis. They're not quite Clovis. They're not quite Clovis Fresno. North, who's right there. You know, so um, my thing with, with them of that is, is the easy answer that a lot of people gave that aren't in the know mm -hmm. is that the, the talent pool dried up at Memorial, which which could it could be a case. But I, that's not why he no, left. No, that's what I'm saying. That's, that's not why that's he left. The, that's the one that everybody's yeah. gravitating towards. And yes. that's just, it's not. No. I mean, talking to him throughout the year and even in the last couple of years, yeah. I mean, that the the, the benefits and, and it being, you know, the salary type, type deal with retirement. I mean, yeah, that, that matters. Well, it matters when you get married and, you know. I mean, I'll be honest, talking to him at the end of our season this year, and I told him I wasn't coming back, and they didn't know. Nobody knew. We mm -hmm. weren't, I wasn't really telling anybody. Um, you know, he was like, yeah, he'd thought about that. Like, I'm getting married. Like, you know, I want to start a family. Like, that was kind of, he wasn't sure what he wanted to do or what his plans mm -hmm. were going to be. So, you know, some people know, and, and he doesn't have to justify it to anybody. No. Um so yeah, I just I think the the one to say just the the only reason is because so, and there's they're not. I mean No, that's why I wanted to kind of go on and and speak not for him, but you know. I know by the way, yeah, John gets to, is coming over too. Like you you coach him with your dad. I mean, it, and I've got a coach with coach Falco before. And don't get me wrong, I it's not like JD gave me this information. This is what I'm thinking. This is what, you know, how it looks if you're if you're in that 
you know, if you've heard what's going on, this, you know, it makes sense, I guess. Let's, we could put it that way. You know, 30 something years old, getting married. Um, I want benefits and, you know, yeah, what no, benefits it, it, are better than teachers benefits? Yeah, benefits. I think, I think some people need so. to, to look at the big picture of things. And there is no telling that it, when KP decides he doesn't want to be the head guy anymore, that it's just JD's to come and take. And then maybe at that point, JD, maybe he not, doesn't want to. Maybe he starts a family and just, you know what I mean? So there's yeah. a lot of uh, assumptions going on. And, and I mean, I guess that people can have their opinion. That's fine. But yeah. I mean, everybody can have their opinion. And, you know, it's, you know, people don't understand to compete at Memorial. He had to try to get guys to come in and it's allowed at a private school. You can do that. You know, uh, maybe some of the methods weren't right or how you do it. Um, but maybe it wasn't just him. Maybe there was people behind the scenes like we're seeing now. Right. And, and so I only know scenes, as far so. as Memorial goes, I know what I know. Yes. Right. And so they're directly. No, this, the stuff I know didn't directly involve him. Yeah. So I'm not going to speak on things I've heard mm -hmm. because it's what's the point? Yeah. I don't know for sure. Right. There's things I know for sure that happen and it is what it's it's been four years. Yeah. Move on. I'm moving on. Yeah. But uh we got a player spotlight that we're gonna do. Stick around for that. It'll be a YouTube only thing. Um Buchanan's own Austin yeah. Young, which we will bring it up. Uh we're not gonna put the onus on him. We'll we'll mention it and see get his thoughts on it. But uh yeah. Go check out the uh, the Austin Young spotlight, little update with him going to Fresno State. Uh, definitely more to this topic. Which, we're, again, we're not taking anything that happens away from the players in our area. That, yeah, but we we, uh, we will elaborate more. To uh, check out the Austin Young Spotlight. Love you guys. Hit or die. All right. Hey, everybody. Welcome back to the Hit or Die podcast with your hosts, Jake Saldati and Chad Rothford. Uh, Buchanan Bear with us today. Um, were you MVP of the track? You were the player of the year? Yeah, track player of the year. Um, Austin Young, thanks for joining the show. Yeah, thanks for having me. Fresno State bound. Yeah. Yes, sir. I'm excited about that one. It's already, it's here, huh? You yeah. It? It's here. Yeah. Start the first day of school is 23rd and uh, first day of practice is 24th. So Go get it. Yeah, absolutely. Are you, are you ready? I am ready. I'm excited. I'm excited for sure. Um, Batesall. You ready for Batesall? I am. Uh, I've heard a lot about him, uh, coaching style and everything. And uh, I think going through the Buchanan uh, baseball program, I think that is going to set me up for success um, with Batesall. Um, just hearing uh, stuff about his coaching style and everything. But uh, I'm ready for him. Yeah, I'm ready to go. I think you are. Did you do it like any visit there? Or like, uh, No. So when... Um, so when I got the offer, um, it was during the COVID uh, okay. uh, period. So like everything was on Zoom and um, I couldn't go on campus and visit and everything, which I mean, that was kind of unfortunate. Mm -hmm. But um, yeah, so it was all over Zoom and um, I haven't, I, yeah, that that's what sucked. I mean. Was Fresno but, State it? Was that the place, home, want to stay home, be around family, play in front of everybody? Yeah, for sure. Uh, I, cause I didn't really, I didn't have any offers, um, up until Fresno state, Fresno state, my first one. And, um, when they offered, I was like, I, I think I want to go there. I want to play, play at home, play in front of the playing play in front of the family for sure. That's, that's one of the most important things. Um, because I mean, my parents, they've, they've helped me get to where I am really. So being able to play in front of them was, um, that'll be pretty cool. So I'm excited yeah, for that. You know, it's a good program. Oh, like for sure. Yeah. It's definitely one of the best uh, coaches out there. Mm -hmm. I mean, Coach Absolutely. Batesville, offensive-wise, hitting-wise, is honestly second to none. Mm -hmm. um, talk about getting into Buchanan, right? Because we've, we've just, you know, we kind of spent some time earlier talking about some transfer stuff. Um, and you were originally at Granite Ridge. Yes. And... Going into high school, you went to Buchanan right right away. Just talk about that. Um, it was definitely it's it's a big difference. Um, going to Granite Ridge, Clovis North, all the all the uh, the I don't want to say rich <laughs> parents, but <laughs> all the families they like like all that stuff's like kind of give it to, given to them. And um, 
like with my family, like that's never really been, been the thing for me. So like I was, I didn't really fit in there anyways, but going to Buchanan, it was, um, it's, it's a lot different for, for, for sure. But, um, if I feel like going to there, it was really a, it was a, it was a good fit for me. I, I love playing there. Um, the whole coaching staff from, uh, my soft or my freshman year on JV all the way to varsity through uh, senior year. Um, I mean, they're all, they're all supportive. They all, they all wish you the best. They all want the best for you and just playing for them. It's, it's awesome. It's a, it's a great experience. How, with what's going on, and I, so people that are listening or watching, you know, Austin wasn't aware of what recently went on yeah. uh, via Twitter. Um, and it, you're, that has nothing to do with you, right? No. But what do you, and so what do you say, or how did you deal with people saying like, oh, this kid was recruited? Because now people are going to go back and look at every player that's gone there and think, oh, this yeah. was a recruited player. Mm-hmm. They're always going to have that stigma even though some may not be the case. And like Brock said on his episode, it was a football deal. And, and then, yeah, yeah, ultimately I just wanted to play Buchanan. Like, he was pretty honest and straightforward oh, about yeah, it. Oh, yeah, for sure. Like, I'm, I'm sure you dealt with, oh, this kid was recruited from, from North. Yeah, so when I first got there, uh, my freshman year, um, I, I probably would have been on varsity playing. But um, the, um, the AD at North was... Um, <laughs> was accusing me of being recruited. So they were trying to sit me for the, the 365 days. And, um, so when I got there, I, I, I dealt with that a lot, just going into uh Gambrell with the, um, AD at Buchanan. Um, I dealt with that a lot and they kind of came to a agreement to, um, to just have me play JV for the first year. And um, just not varsity. So, uh, yeah, I dealt with that a lot. But you guys moved, right? You moved. Yeah, we moved. Yeah, so at the end of eighth grade year, um, um, we decided to move out of the house um, over in uh, Clovis North District. And uh, my parents gave me an option there. They were saying, if you want to go to Buchanan, we we could find a house and go to Buchanan. Because, like, I mean, just watching, uh, watching them play, going through that um the era with uh tom donald and watching you know all those guys like jamal play Mm -hmm. and um i mean it was it was the place to be like for sure but um uh so they gave me the the decision if i wanted to go to north or go to be canon and i was i want to go to be canon so but like it it was ultimately ultimately my choice right did you feel like did you feel like you couldn't have that same thing at north though just i'm just curious um I think well, so. And at that time, you got that. that's when the coaching change did yeah. happen also. Yeah. So mm-hmm. I get that there's like some uncertainty yeah, with what's sure. going to happen or who the guy is going to be. Yeah. So, I mean, I understand that. But I guess even at that, just did you feel like that was possible? Because you guys had a good good group. Oh, for sure. Um, so, like, so when it all happened, um, I, so our our whole team was kind of was pretty close because mm-hmm. we had all p- kind of played a lot of travel ball together too uh, from the Granite. So we... Um, I kind of told them like I'm thinking about moving to Buchanan, and at that point it was it was Eddie Timo, um, who else? Uh, crap, Preston Kilbert. He doesn't play baseball anymore, but they all they were like, yeah, because um, Eddie went to Memorial. Timo was like, yeah, I kind of want to move too. So like everyone wanted to kind of get out, and like and that and that was when all the stuff was going down with CP and. Um, the and players North, yeah. there when they all got caught for smoking whatever and in, in, uh, <laughs> whatever downtown yeah uh, yeah I, in LA or whatever yeah but um and then uh that was when uh CP ended up leaving or whatever happened with that and um and at that that point I felt like it was a good time to go over to Buchanan still so, a raw deal for me man because yeah. I like I like CP a lot oh yeah yeah, yeah. For I sure. always always thought like the only thing that Chris did wrong in that was taking his team somewhere for them. You know yeah. what I mean? Like yeah. that was a, that was to take them to do something awesome that hardly any teams oh, around sure. here get to do. Yeah, yeah. and, and then, then that's, that's the reward. He, yeah, yeah. It, it totally backfired on him. It's all bullshit. But <laughs> but no, I mean, I and I appreciate that. Again, it's like Chad's always been saying recently. Like, just this is what I wanted to do. You know, and yeah, and, and I respect with that. that. I think I, what, I can respect that. I think with the situation that has just recently happened with Twitter, or the the text messages coming out, it's 
it's like that part of it is, is what's wrong. It's yeah. just it's blatant. Like that's not what needs to happen. If these kids want to come, let them come. Yeah. And if their parents want them there, let their parents make that decision. Right. But there's leave them alone. Hey, so why don't we do this? Why doesn't Clovis Unified just be Clovis Unified and not have boundaries for schools? And Fresno Unified do the same thing. It's Fresno Unified. Go to whatever Fresno Unified school you want to go to. Go to whatever Clovis Unified school you want to go to. I mean, would that make it easier to just it, have? It probably would. Would yes. It so still I mean, pissed. It still pissed people oh, off. Yeah, 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 of course it would. But, but it, it, it probably <laughs> helped the CI up a little bit because they're, they're obviously not doing anything. But something's no. got to happen. You can't. You can't be contacting players like that. Yeah. Like that's a bad look, man. You just can't do that. Yeah. Especially but I mean, when he wasn't. Proof of it. Yeah, yeah. Right. Like. And but the thing is, is he's not affiliated with Buchanan, so he who's in trouble. So for they that. can't get in trouble. Yeah. You know, because that's like you now recruiting for recruiting for Madeira. Yeah. And you're not there anymore. Yeah. But you're blue. I am behind the scenes, but I'm not coaching. Yeah. yeah. And he's behind the scenes, too. He's, you know, but done their social mm -hmm. media and all that yeah, kind of stuff, yeah. you know. So um, but that's actually not a bad idea. Now that you say that they're just making it district wide thing. Well, I mean, yeah. Clovis Unified wants the track to be Clovis Unified anyway, so you might as well just fucking. Well, schools with with districts with multiple schools, you know, like in Madera, right? The Ag department's at one school. Yeah. And if I live over here and not in the Ag department, I shouldn't be I should be able to go to Madera. To Madera South. Yeah. You know, or I should have to Madera. pick up my and move. Yeah. You know, so I guess that makes sense, but yeah, you're going to piss off a lot. I mean, cuz Clovis would you move like 2 miles? And you're out of you know what I, you know yeah. what I mean like yeah, yeah. honestly it's a freaking oh this street right here no, I, can, yeah. I can move across the street now I'm in a Buchanan district like but at what point does what, at what point do these guys like the guys that are doing that that are reaching reaching out and contacting players at what point does like like a Clovis West Buchanan Memorial Bullard any of them have to get too many guys to where like now you have disgruntled parents and players that have been there. All these years. I mean, I think that's going to come down to the parents now. Oh, yeah. You know? I mean, your parents gave you the decision. Mm -hmm. um, you know? Right, but I'm saying if, but he, like, what like if, if you but were... But what if four catchers decided to go? What well, if, if he was exactly, a sophomore... What if every Clovis catcher, yeah. Clovis High, Buchanan, Clovis West, what if they all decided to go to Buchanan? Now he's battling with five guys. I think that's where you have to look at, okay... Is it still the right fit for me? Right. We're yeah, talking about exactly. high school baseball. This isn't college baseball and fit. You know, it's well, weird. True. You're right. You're right. You know, I mean, you should normally you think you hang out your boys, you hang out with all your life. You play with them all the way through high school. I mean, that's how it used to be. But it's different now. Everybody but plays see, like he just said he wanted schools. to go like, I, I want to go to Buchanan. Like I want yeah. a, that. And you were a dude, right? Obviously player of the year. Um, Nope, they're not. Not many guys are just that honest about it. Mm -hmm. You know, like it's which is what's how it should be. I think. I think a lot of the parents try to find an excuse. Oh, for sure, because they don't want to be looked sure. down on. They don't yeah. want to be talked about like we're talking about yeah. people. But you know what? If you said, you know what, I just want my yeah, kid to go to Buchanan because I, I, I want it. him to play play baseball. Buchanan. Okay, what am I going to say? I don't like. How the can back, I say anything about it? I don't like the back. Don't tell alley. me that I'm going for academics when you can have honor classes in or whatever they are. See, I'm not even smart. You, what are they? What classes are they? AP, AP, AP classes. classes. Yeah. You can have AP classes yeah. at any damn high school. Yeah, exactly. And no, did they once say, "Oh, we're recruiting you because you go to Buchanan"? No, Fresno State. You know what I mean? They don't care yeah. your 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 grades. Your grades. Yeah, they don't care yeah. if it came from. I don't. I think the problem that. The problem I have, okay, I don't know the problem with, with everybody. Like, I know Coach Fox talked about poaching, right? And we, we mentioned this before you got here. How good would some of the tracks be, track teams be, without with some of the talent kids. that came in from outside of the area? For sure. Like, they'd still be good. Buchanan's still going to be good. Yeah. But, like, Waddy's, Watson wasn't a Buchanan guy. No. You know what I'm LT. saying? So, you know, and... Yeah. If they'd had Riley them, Cooper, they, yeah, was yeah. yeah Kingsburg. Yo, know, Gatewood, mm -hmm. Gatewood came from Redwood. Yeah, um, I'm sure the list is long. What I don't like is the back door, the alley, back alley, behind the scenes, directly contacting a player. Yeah, you can't do that shit. You can't do that shit. Well, who says you can't? You shouldn't do it. You shouldn't. You're right. It needs to stop. If you're doing it, <laughs> stop. Seriously, like we don't say names on here, right? And we don't put people on blast, like especially some of the stuff we know. Yeah, we don't. 
Okay. We know it's getting <laughs> harder and harder and harder to not put people on blast. Cause there's so many people that you could just, it's, it, there's enough. It's, there's enough. <laughs> oh, yeah. And, uh, I don't want to do that because yeah. that's not what this was supposed to no, be about. No. Yeah. This was supposed to be about highlighting guys like you and teams around the Valley. But what we saw last night was it's, it's, it's bullshit. It shouldn't, it shouldn't happen. It should be addressed. And I'm sure Fonsi will address it. Yeah. Um, oh, he will. You know what he I mean? Like, I don't sure. think I, we talked about this. I, I don't think Fonsi had any clue. Probably. Not. I doubt I it. I really don't. I doubt it. Dude, Just knowing, knowing him yeah, and not, how at central and whatever. And people might say, oh, that's bullshit. He, what, prove it. Prove it. And then I'll, I'll be on your side. I've known Brad for a long time. Never. Even I know what he dealt with at Central. It just, I don't see that in his nature. I know he's not contacting players. If you and can I know prove he's it, not having yes. so-and-so no. contact him either. I'm, I could imagine, I, I can only imagine how he's feeling. So, yeah. but back to you. Sorry. No we, went on, we went on a little tangent there. Uh, you said earlier you didn't pl- like you played a little bit of travel ball mm-hmm. middle school area. When yeah. you got into high school, did that slow down? Uh, yeah, it did. Um, I mean, I just got in the weight room a lot more. Not not a ton. Not until um, going into my junior year. COVID but kind of put yeah. you. Yeah. Oh, for sure. Yeah. But because um, it's like all the like big showcases and stuff that they all. You got to pay freaking $500 to go <laughs> yeah, that's crazy. get two at-bats or whatever. I mean, I just didn't see any point of it. And um, I just felt like if I go play, go do what I do in high school, that um, people will come watch me. Like, I, I, I just, I didn't want to, I didn't want to go pay to have people watch me. And especially. You don't know, you don't know who's watching you. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. It, yeah. yeah. But, um, but yeah, so I didn't, I only played a few tournaments, like with like the CBA and the NorCal and stuff. I didn't play a ton of it. Um, you felt like I, that was better for, for your body and recovery. For and, sure. And yeah. Um, especially during the summer after a long high school season, um, playing, like adding those extra games, especially as a catcher. Like adding those extra games on on the legs, it um it'll take a toll over time, like like um, I mean, so my junior year before the COVID happened, um, um, uh, like I was, I was hurting after like ten games, and like when when the whole COVID happened, I was I was down I was down like fifteen pounds, and that was only after a month or month wow. or something of season. And, um, I felt like one of the, uh, one of the things that helped me a lot this year for my senior year is I was able to maintain the weight. Like I was like, I was like 180, 185 for the whole season. And like normally like, so like my junior year, I started out like I was, I was a little bit lighter. I was like, I was like 175 ish. Like by the end of that, when COVID all hit, I was like, I was like 160, 165. Like I was, I was, it was, it wasn't, it wasn't good. But, um, cause I was still, I was still in the weight room during season and stuff, but it wasn't, it wasn't a lot of muscle building, like heavy lifting and stuff. Almost might like maintaining. Yeah. Like maintaining. Yeah. yeah. But then like, like the long, like the long practices, the long, and then going to lift after that, um, that really took a toll on, on the body, especially, like I said, especially catching, I'm in that squat for seven innings. But um, yeah, so like this year, I was I was just eating. I was eating so much. Like after games and everything, I get like I'd get, <laughs> I I get two four by fours from In and Out. <laughs> I'd I'd pound that after a game. I'd be sick. It, oh oh yeah, it was it was it was it was, it was good to be young again. <laughs> I'm not even that old. Well, to eat that and then not gain weight. Yeah, <laughs> I, I need. Not, I don't know yeah, what that exactly. is. Exactly. Yeah, I could eat that for two days that then not eat the rest of the week and yeah but you talk you talk about the gym and we talked about it when i i coached against you in 19 and then we didn't play you in 20 Mm because of covid yeah but i noticed a big difference going from even just your sophomore year 
And then I didn't get to see you in your junior year, but I noticed the weight room stuff. Mm -hmm. Um, You know, you go to Bullet Gym. Yeah. uh, They have a great facility for working out. And uh, you're a gym rat. You became a gym rat over Mm -hmm. COVID. And how much did that help you with not only your development um, of your body, Mm -hmm. um, but also as a catcher, you need to, um, the stretching you know, oh, yeah. have a lot of uh, flexibility. Mm-hmm. Um, how much did you concentrate on that getting ready for your senior year? And then, you know, especially with signing with Fresno State and um, having probably doubters saying, like, what has this guy done? And, yeah. you know, does he deserve this? Um, so kind of take us through that. Um, yeah. So like so like you said, like the doubters and everything, like so my sophomore year, I split time on varsity. And I mean, I hit like I hit like 320 or something. So like I feel like like, I feel like I could have had a better year, but um, I still felt like I had something to prove, especially going into my junior year. And then, so, like, like I was, like, I was locked in junior year. We were just about to start track play, track play and um, the COVID thing happens, whatever. And um, and I was, I was a little, I was pissed off because, like, I was just getting locked in and um, hadn't, had, hadn't had any offers, wasn't really talking to anyone. And uh, when the when COVID hit, I was... It, um, it was, it was tough because like I'm missing junior year. Um, and, um, like this was the time for exactly, me to, to exactly. get those looks. Yeah. And, um, like, so like all the gym shut down and everything, every, everything shut down really. I mean, it was, it was tough to like find stuff to do, like to get better. And like, like I remember there's times and this was still what I hadn't had to offer yet. I was, I was, I was, I was pissed off and um like i'm in the i'm in my freaking garage i have two 25 pound dumbbells and a yoga mat and i'm i'm doing shit in the garage trying to get better because i'm pissed off that i one i don't have any offers two i don't have a junior year and um and junior year i was gonna go i was gonna go prove myself i was well, yeah go you're get the dude my, you're exactly. the dude now yeah you're, you're not you're ready. Time exactly. anymore, right? you're having mm-hmm. a year yeah, and like junior year at Buchanan, we were we were pretty young, and um and our our fall was it was pretty rough, and um but um like we were just getting going really like I I feel like if we had that junior year I feel like we would we we would have gone back to back rings for think sure so? I think so, like I know I know North had Riley and everything but I don't know. I think I think we could have done it. I think the only other, I think the team that was going to cause the most havoc that year was Sam Clovis Clovis West. Well, Memorial too. That's true. Well, in the true. track, Clovis West. Yes, mm-hmm. yes. We had we had two guys on the yeah, bump that were did. good. You did, yeah. And we had we had some hitters too yeah, that you year. Did. Yeah, I was gonna, I, dude. That was gonna be a good oh yeah track for sure. Twenty twenty. Mm-hmm. I agree. I mean, you had Riley, Aon, Henderson, Galvan, Beal. Galvin, Galvin, yeah, Beal. Yeah. Oh, Beal, I forgot about Beal. Parker. Yeah. Wiltsy, too. Mm-hmm. Wiltsy. Everybody had a guy. That was going to be a fun track season. For sure. And everybody was like 8-1 and one or 9-1 and yeah. One or, yeah. you know. Yeah, that would have been a that would have been a good track here, for sure. Yeah. You, I still feel like Memorial was going to be, won at all. be pretty good. You guys wouldn't have won at all. You don't think so? You think <laughs> you think the Eagles were going to get it done? Uh, you guys I think we would have would've had a shot. You did have we to. We would have had a shot. Sure. I, yeah, I don't sure. know. I think that was – I think we we talked about that had been like one of the most competitive tracks oh, as yeah. far in as a long time. top to bottom mm-hmm. in, in, gosh, like seven, eight years. Yeah. yeah. It had been a while. Definitely. Uh, Sorry. Go ahead. Keep going. Yeah. No, no. Yeah. My bad. We were – Oh, no problem. You were no talking problem. about the gym, that the gym's yeah, closed down, yeah. and then you brought a bullet. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So um, I started I started with him in like uh, – he's going into my sophomore year, kind of the sum, summer going into the sophomore year. And um, I stayed with him – uh, as long as I could, but like sophomore year, I kind of, I kind of back, I backed off a little bit, uh, during season and, um, and I felt like, like, I, I regret that. Like I, I shouldn't have done that. I just kept going in there, get stronger, whatever. And, uh, junior year, um, when he shut, when he shut down, that was when, um, I was talking about, it. I, I was, I was pissed off because I couldn't go, I couldn't go get better, get stronger, whatever. And, um, but like doing that, uh, here senior year I mean that was a huge game changer um, especially maintaining body weight everything um, staying strong through the season because I mean your body's gonna your muscles gonna deteriorate throughout especially especially catching 
One, well, I, I mean, mean, we played three games a week this year. Yeah, yeah. that was tough too. Mm-hmm. Did you catch everyone? Oh yeah, yeah, oh, boy, yeah, good. Freaking ice baths every day. <laughs> yeah, like how was it in between? Because I can tell you, like in Madera, we it it was rough playing three games a week was hard because you'd have really two practices that were kind of like. We just kind of get those are like BP and in and out. Yeah, yeah like get exactly. through some things. We're not really going to push these guys very hard. Uh, were you guys similar? Like, mainly it was like Wednesday, Friday. We kind of yeah. or whatever. I think that was Friday because we played Saturday. Mm-hmm. Monday was like our toughest day because they had a day off Sunday. But yeah, was that kind of the same for you guys? Yeah. So we we gotten in we got into a good routine, um, especially like you said the three day or three games a week. Um, like mon so Monday we'd do like. We do our individual defensive stuff, then we go through a live live bunt defense. So where pitchers are actually throwing, we're we're all bunting and shit. So like we got in, into a good routine with that, and um, so mo- Monday was pretty. It, we pushed it a little harder, and then um, like Wednesday, like yeah, Wednesday, um, we do. I mean, it's pretty much just individual defense, uh, bunt bunt stuff, and then BP. Then we got out of there, so it's pretty. It's pretty yeah. lighter, especially going um, later into the season. But like earlier in the season, we'd it was um, they we'd push it pretty hard. Yeah, you had a real short time to get everything exactly. done. Exactly, and like especially beginning before season even started. I mean, we were we were we were busting our asses every day, pretty much. So during COVID is when Fresno State gave hit you up and approached yeah. you, and and so were you, it was. Was there anything specific said to you about wanting to go there, or were you thinking maybe wait out, maybe JUCO, mm-hmm. and then go? But or was it just? I mean, I know you said playing at home and playing in front of your parents was yeah. something that kind of made it easy decision. But did JUCO cross your mind at all? Um, it started. It started to when um, it was. It was later into the COVID season, towards the end of my junior year. Um, COVID or. Uh, yeah, Fresno City stuff like that, the JUCO stuff. That definitely it started crossing my mind. I was like, man, maybe JUCO is the route. Like, I mean, it's not, but not a bad route at all. I don't know. I mean, but um, yeah, that it definitely. I was, I definitely thought about it for a long time. But yeah, I mean, I think Fresno. It's easy decision to make too. But I just, I know some guys were, you know, I've heard guys say, "Oh, I'm not. I feel like I'm more than this offer." Not to say that it was Fresno State, but yeah. You know, so they go JUCO and, you know, they end up getting where they want to get. But I think you made the right move, dude. I'm excited you're going to be Bulldog. So. Yeah, uh, me too. I think you're walking into a great coaching staff, uh, a good squad. And uh, I know Coach Bates will told him he's this year's getting after it. Oh, yeah. You better be ready. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, not, I'm not even kidding. I'm, I've, I've seen his schedule. <laughs> you better be ready to go. Not just you, everybody. Oh yeah. And I oh, wanted yeah. to ask you because I didn't. We didn't. Uh, we played you once this year, mm-hmm. and I think most of you, the starters, were out after like the third inning, or maybe maybe even sooner. Um, are you a one knee guy? I'm no. Mm-mm. You're not into I, the one knee. I'm not. I tried it for a little bit um, going into my senior year. I did it during the fall a little bit with uh, Braden Frankfurt. Okay. But um, ultimately, I I didn't like it. I mean, especially like the blocking side, yeah. like, like I was just watching, I just, I just walked by the TV and the little, little league world series was on some guy was on one knee. There's runner on first. It was on one knee still. And he, there's a curveball about, I mean, it wasn't even, it was, it wasn't, it wasn't that far outside. And he just like flailed at it with his glove. I was like, dude, you, it's you gotta block that. I mean, and like, Especially the young, younger kids starting to do it, I I don't like it because. Do you think I mean, it's teaching lazy habits? Yeah, for sure, for sure. Well, if I'm and, a base runner, the first thing we talk about is just watch how they throw the ball back. If they're on one knee or at any knee, like we're delay stealing. But I mean, pitch. how athletic are you on one knee? I feel like you're not very right. athletic. Like, and does it I, help with the low pitch that everybody's saying that the oh they're on the one knee because the low pitch mm-hmm. is easier? Does it is it You've seen our high school umpires. They're fucking mm. terrible. Anyways, oh, yeah. <laughs> does it really matter? Like, how many calls would you get? Like, two, three? It's, yeah. Two, uh, yeah. Two or three out of a so seven is it worth, game. So, is it worth a pass ball I, or a runner abs- moving up? Absolutely not. I don't think so. Because, I mean, in the long run, that, that, 
that pass ball could lead to an extra run that yeah. and you're maybe playing a one or two run game and that that one extra run that that was caused by that pass ball i mean that could be the you could make make or break a game you know yeah so and i was a catcher in high school and then junior college i went to first base but my dad was a catcher my brother was a mm-hmm. catcher so i grew up as a catcher and to me i just feel like I can say this because I caught. So fuck anybody out there that says you don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> exactly. I, yeah. I just feel like they're just trying to get comfortable. Like, yeah. like just, oh, I'm comfortable. But as a catcher, you can't be like, no, you're the quarterback, man. You're the no, captain. You're, but you have exactly. to be able to move yeah. in an instant yeah. to mm-hmm. block something. And I was always taught, I don't care if you're warming the pitcher up. You block everything. Exactly. Because That's you don't, how I was you don't know who's watching you. Yep. And they just see you freaking do this or do that or what's going to happen when a runner's on. You're so used to doing that. You're not used to blocking the exactly. ball. Exactly. You're just going to create bad habits. Yep. So, and then I see, I get it. It's comfortable on one knee because you're mm. sitting back. Like, and you're, oh, my knees. Or you're a fucking catcher, dude. Exactly. Yachty's been exactly. catching for 20 plus years. Yep. You know what I mean? Yep. I well, mean, yeah, he's doing the one knee thing now, but he didn't do that all the no. time. Yeah. But he's earned he's also, that, right? He, exactly. Oh, he's absolutely. Yachty Molina. Absolutely, you know? yeah. He made a good point, too, like with the little league thing. When the runner at first base, pass ball gets a second. I mean, with two outs and a runner at first in the stretch, a pitcher is probably approach mentally is different than with a runner at second base. Mm-hmm. It's probably a little more stressful with a runner at second base yep. now, right? His yep. whole demeanor changes and – you know, now he leaves one middle that a kid hits in the gap or even yep. ball up the middle and scores a run. Well, even less than two outs. I right. mean, run, run around first. Any you're, trying to get, you're trying to get that ground ball, yeah. get that double play. Right. Mm-hmm. Yeah. 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 Keep the double play in order. Mm-hmm. And yeah, that, I just like that you had the perspective that we have. But, I mean, with nobody on, I really don't care. Yeah. I, re- I really don't care with, with nobody on. If you want to get comfortable – but still try to block the ball. Yeah, like, exactly. That's my big thing is, like, just block the ball. You're, yeah. you're paid or you got your scholarship – because you're you can catch and throw mm-hmm. and like i'll be honest when you recruit a catcher can they catch and throw first before you, you would look at the hitting exactly and that's always a hitting's a plus i mean you see it in the big leagues. absolutely there's a lot a lot of catchers that are really good hitters exactly. or hit lead off you know yeah. what i mean they're plus exactly. well that's high school he's not gonna, <laughs> I, I'm he's just not gonna hit lead off at fresno state no, he'll be in the middle of the line but so he much. can he can hit he yeah can. but you know what i mean like right. that's not the first they don't go out no you're 100 you're 100 percent right he can catch and throw you right. know so and I feel like these young guys are learning this. And that's the thing with the launch angle stuff. We're teaching these little kids this launch angle stuff. But you're trying to teach a kid something that a 6'8", 285-pound yes. Aaron Judge does. Exactly. How, the, how can you even teach somebody that? Mm-hmm. It makes no sense. Yeah. And, like, I'm a hitting coach, and I hit for power. But guess what? I, I do not teach launch angle. I teach Absolutely. fucking hard ground balls and mm-hmm. line drives. You teach hard ground balls. Yeah, I teach hard ground balls. Home runs will come. Home exactly. runs come when you don't. Yeah when you don't do it when you try for a home run they never come trust me i've had two or three home runs in my life where i've said i'm gonna go hit a home run well you're talking about the rotational hitting like there's a hole there's a hole i'm just gonna pitch to that hole oh yeah at some point that guy's got to be pretty pissed off about not having any success yeah right the rotational hitting thing it's nonsense it's i mean unless you're six eight 285 pounds Mm -hmm. And you're in the big leagues and have done it one million yeah, times. Yeah, but I think I heard Coach Bates will say about Judge that, like, before all that, he was really good mm-hmm. at hitting the ball the other way. way. Oh, yeah. Well, that's what they do there. So, State. yep. Yeah. He, he, he can never have he a team on that. the inside mainly. You right. Know? He could do that. Um, you know, 2021, we get our season back. Mm-hmm. You got, we play a lot of baseball this year. Uh, and I think the expectation was you guys were going to be the team to beat uh, right out the gate. For sure. Um, again, Memorial had another good club. Um, you know, Stockdale had a really good club. We, they you know, did. We yeah. didn't get to see them much up here because of, of travel restrictions yes. and, and not being able to play county to county. Um, you know, talk about that a little bit. Like, do the expectations ever even cross your guys' mind, or is it just show up today and get to work? It's, yeah, at, being at Buchanan, it's the same expectation all the time. I mean, we have we have a sign over our bullpen. It's newer, and it's it says the standard. And, I mean, the standard is you show up every day. You get your work done, no matter who you're playing. I mean, like um, Subi, our uh, third base coach, he always says nameless, faceless opponent, op- opponent. So it doesn't matter who you're playing. You play Buchanan baseball. You go do what you do. You don't play down to opponents. You don't play up to opponents. Like uh, we played uh, – 
Oh shoot. Uh, um, Madeira, and you kicked their ass. You didn't play. Not, you didn't play down. Not <laughs> not Madeira. And then you played Liberty in the, in it the it section game, and you whooped their ass because you didn't hey, play down. Right? I, that was our I mean, eighth. That was our eighth. No, I know. Track but I'm just trying team. to. I, that was the last. Of eight in a row track games that we had. No, to play. you had a you had a strong schedule. I'm just trying to say, you and know, they kicked the ever loving. <laughs> shit out you of whooped us. the division two teams ass like you're supposed to, and you whooped the division one team in the section. I game mean, was like Liberty was not a slouch. No, they weren't. Oh no, <clears throat> that's what I'm no, that score. But when you play, dictate. like you're saying, the standard. Mm -hmm. When you play up to that standard, that's what you're gonna do. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's the same same standard every day. It doesn't change. Um, especially especially practice. Like if we're if we're dragging ass in practice, man. He'll let you know. Yeah, Coach Fonts will it. let you. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. When you guys, I mean, you kind of ran away with the track. I think you guys ended up <clears> locking it up with like four or five to go. Mm -hmm. But then you get into the playoffs. And the playoffs and in, in, in the Valley, it's a crapshoot. It's a one and none. Yeah. Yeah. One play 16, which I love. And guys have pitches. And I've said it in the Absolutely. past. I'm a Madera guy. And back when I played, we were, everybody was. I mean, the difference between all the teams was very small, mm -hmm. right? We would beat Buchanan, Buchanan beat us, we'd split with Clovis. I mean, everybody was really good. I hate Buchanan, okay? <laughs> a lot of people do. So when they would lose, it was like, <laughs> it was a victory for me, yeah. even if we didn't beat them that year. So you know everybody's looking at the score, you know, uh, down in the seventh inning. You know, just talk about that game. I know Sky, we did. We talked with Sky after that. and uh, Yeah, that's right. Just, I mean, that, that was did like... Did you guys ever think you're down? Mm -hmm. Or, like, did you think they were going to come punch you in the face like that? No. A 16 seed, no. Was that an instance but, where maybe you guys came, didn't show up like you should have yes, shown up? Uh, yeah, I agree. Um, we, yeah, our uh, BP and in and out, they weren't, it wasn't great. But, um, and I think going into it, playing the 16 seed, we were like, oh, we, we're going to take this. Easy, easy win. And then we come out. I mean, their their pitcher, he wasn't bad. He was like mid eighties with a good breaking ball. But he, um, but yeah, we didn't we didn't play Buchanan baseball like we should have for the first four or five innings until until we and then we went down and it was like, oh man, we gotta you face some adversity. Oh, for sure, for sure. Hey. And um, yeah, when Scott when Sky came up, I was on I was on deck. I was like, oh man, you're gonna like, be the. <laughs> I was like, <laughs> I was like, oh yeah, yeah, and he, he hit that, he hit that ball. I was like, I was like, no way. It looked like it was a line drive to the center fielder, and I, I remember watching it. It barely went over too. It was like maybe a foot, and I was like, there's no way. I, hey, I home runs a home run. Oh yeah, yeah, exactly, exactly. No, but I watched it go over. I was, I was, just, I, just, I, just, I, I stood there for a little bit. I was just like. Like, like did that what? really happen? This. Yeah, exactly. That was exactly what I was going through. Well, how many like, outs? What? How what was that? In? No, I think the first guy got on. First and guy they bunted him over. Right. Yeah, um, yeah. Um, Wally hit a double, I think. Oh, oh no, no, no. Yeah, yeah. Someone and hit a double. Guy, you're yeah. thinking he's gonna bunt him over. Yes, and then mm -hmm. he didn't. Yep. So you so either no outs because Sky was the go ahead was the winning run. Yes. Yeah, they so were down by one. We were down right? by so one. So yep. he would have been on third base that because as fast as he was going, you watched that clip. He did not. Yeah. So you'd had nobody out. You'd you'd, you'd driving him in. Mm -hmm. You're yeah, I was. Yeah, I was on deck thinking like, like, okay, I'm gonna. You're gonna have an opportunity. I'm gonna have an opportunity to either, either tie it, tie it, or win it. Yeah. yeah. I mean, is that typically your on deck routine? Like, judge, see what's going on in the field, and this is my job. Mm -hmm. um, besides the first inning when you lead off. <laughs> yes. Yes. Besides that. Or you're thinking I'm just gonna start this game off with a homer. <laughs> <laughs> I try not to, but I did. I did a couple times, but. Um, but yeah, no, my on deck routine it's it's really the the same every time. Doesn't really matter the situation unless like it's like a like a runner on second, no outs, got to move them or whatever. But um, yeah, my on deck routine is kind of the same thing. Just see the ball well, get a pitch to hit, swing at strikes, and um, just be on be on time. Like that's really that's most of my on deck routine is, routine is getting the timing, be on time, and I mean. I just kind of go from there, get in the box, do do my thing. Well, you got you did it pretty well. <laughs> Thank you. I will you did it really well. You let's just say this: anybody that thought you weren't deserving of your scholarship, put their foot in their mouth because you definitely went out, got in the gym, mm -hmm. got bigger, got stronger, worked on your hitting, 
I mean, you were a good catcher as it was, mm. and got your game right, and you went out and said, look at me now. Yep. You know, you did everything you were supposed to, and you you made everybody that didn't want you look stupid as well. You I know? think what's People really good about you. it, though, is that nobody pushed him to do it but himself. Yeah. You know, and you, you uh, set your own expectations for sure. uh, to where you want to be. I think Coach Bates will, like, dude, that is that is what, if anybody's wanting to play Division One, like, that is... Well, like Batesall says, I shouldn't have to motivate you. Mm-mm. Exactly. Well, was, it was like the episode with Brock. It's all intrinsic. Baseball is intrinsic. Yeah. And you gotta, if you don't want it, you're you're gonna you're gonna get left behind. Like, it doesn't matter how good you are. Like, you could you could have all the talent in the world, and if you're if you're not gonna go work, I mean, work beats talent, of, mm-hmm. in my opinion, a hundred percent of the time. Yeah. And because if you don't want it, if you don't want to go get it yourself, then no, no one's going to push you. No one's, not a lot of people are going to push you to do it. Especially when you get to the next level, like, you know, high school, you still have people pushing yeah. you and helping you out. Mm-hmm. Once you get to college, there's nobody going to be there to do that. Exactly. When you get to pro ball, it's even worse. You're mm-hmm. on your own. Oh, yeah. Oh, for yeah. the rest of your career. Yep. How tough are you? You know? Exactly. And you're away from home and you don't have, you know, you're not seeing the same teammates all the time and guys come and go. It, it Yeah. It's you know, a job. It is. You know? mm-hmm. It is. This is, you know, one of the last opportunities at State you're going to have to be with a family for three for or sure. four years, man. Mm-hmm. It's, it's it's exciting, though, dude. I'm, I love it when guys stay home. Yeah. I'm always excited when guys get to go play baseball. Absolutely. Period. But when they choose to stay home and be Bulldogs, I love it because I'm a huge Fresno State fan. I grew up going to Fresno State. I mean, was, was that something? you go to Bulldog games? Oh, yeah, yeah, for sure. I'd go with my dad all the time. I mean, I love, go- I love going to them, too. So... And like what you said was staying home. I think that was one of the things that a lot of people liked about about me going to Fresno State is like the local local talent staying home instead of I mean not not that going elsewhere is um, is bad. Yeah, but, yeah. But like staying home, especially especially Fresno State. I mean, it's it's pretty cool. Yeah, I mean, because so. I think I think you know people see Fresno State as like not something great. Exactly. And I was like, well, why would you? They have a national championship. They how many Mountain they West win. titles? They have 15, yeah, how you know. many rings do they have? Like, because they're not playing for a national title every year. Do you know how hard that is? Yeah. Come on. Have a clue. You no, know, Fresno State's one of the best programs, not just in, in the state of California, but in the country. And mm-hmm. the Mountain, in their conference, for sure. Absolutely. You know, they had their, their moments of, be, you know, not being consistent. But last year, they faced some circumstances that, not, that other programs didn't have to face. Other programs had falls. Exactly. They they had time to get work in. They yeah. didn't. So, you know, I, I they love do it. this year. They though. do. Oh, I'm I'm excited, oh, yeah. man. So I'll, we're going to be there. You know, all oh, you got Fresno City, but I can come out on Fridays. I'll be there. You know, I'm going to be there. Hopefully, watching you play, man. I'm excited, man. It's it's like I said, it's great to see guys stay home. Yeah. Uh, love watching the Bulldogs, and I hope more people can get out there. It looked like uh, as the season went on this year, more people were going to games and. Uh, Hopefully it stays that way, um, dude. Just congratulations on a on an awesome season. Thank you. All the yeah, success, winning a ring. Um, I I'm sorry that you're gonna hear all the backlash of the recruiting stuff. Um, don't come it at doesn't the. Doesn't matter to him. He's, I'm just he's saying, got a like, ring and he's out. Don't come at the players. It's not on the players, um, and especially in that situation and circumstance. Uh, we will continue to talk about that topic. Um, being that it was just last night, we had this plan today. Uh, we will definitely get into it some more. And I know people are, like I said, pissed. And uh, we will keep hitting on it. And we'll have some people on to discuss it with us. But today is about Mr. Young. And uh, go watch the Bulldogs this year, man. Yes, sir. Um, Absolutely. I am. I am. We've been trying to get a hold of you for a while now. And we really wanted you to do our home run derby. Because yes. we. Yeah. I'm, when I was hitting up Tanner and all these guys are like, oh, yeah, you got to get Austin. I'm like, I'm trying. I'm trying. And you're actually really hard to get a hold of. Like, people <laughs> I, I, don't I understand. You yeah. are really difficult to get a hold of. Um, uh, but I know you had the, the Valley game the right before, and then you're going to the state. So I understand. Um, he was in, though. He was in. He was if in. If they lost. Um, so that's why we were pushing for the loss in the first round, but, uh, hey, a lot of people were, so, <laughs> and that was for just selfish reasons. Yeah. I was mainly <laughs> wanting for the home run derby. Though. Yeah. Now, Hey, uh, good luck, man. Congrats on the, the title. 
Did you guys order your rings yet? Yeah, we did. Um, we're. Did I, you raise your own money? <laughs> that was another conversation we've had. You had oh, yeah, we did. Oh, yeah. You had to pay for your own ring. How quickly yeah, I've do, forgotten do, do, do. about some of the topics. I'm yep. so, my brain's so Which in this. Which I think is horseshit. Yeah. You guys have to pay for your own rings. Uh, shout out our athletic director, by the way. Yeah, Madeira Unified backed out, so the athletic director picked him up. I didn't, yeah. I didn't, you didn't need to say all that, but yeah, hey. I do need to say that because I don't give a shit. Our <laughs> athletic director. I made, I made Madeira Unified sound so good yeah. that they don't need the credit. Yeah, Your yeah. athletic director does. Our, our AD, Fernandez. Our AD's the man. He picked it up, the yeah, bill. He's the man. That's awesome. Yeah, yeah. he's the man. Um, again. Gambrell, yeah. what's up? <laughs> <laughs> I think they're going to have some bigger fish to fry with, with. Well, maybe not. Like you said, he's not a coach there, so they may not have to deal with it at all. But uh, we will stay with that. We will be back I mean, next. 40 uniforms. Yeah. <laughs> next. That's yeah, a, that's, you guys yeah, had a oh, bracket yeah. for uniforms, man. You can't pay I, for uh, the rings. Uh, yeah. That's, that's a lot cool. of stuff to keep track of. Your closet's oh, yeah. probably hey, full. Oh, it's, it, I have a whole closet for all my for all my jerseys <laughs> we had. It's crazy. Hey, but the rings look good. Are they the ones that they showed the picture of? Or mm-hmm. that look yeah. like the Boston ones kind of? Yep. Yeah. They look sweet. So. Yeah. I'm excited. I think we get them next week or something. So really? That yeah, quick? Yeah. I hope it was hopefully, worth the $7,000 you guys paid each. <laughs> yeah, I hope we so. just, ours just got ordered today, finally. We have to wait like weeks. Yeah, Fonts That's was that. on that shit. When we when Dude, we, won, I, we got it like a week later, or after we lost uh, in the state game, we 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 were, we were there the next day or I'm customizing them. So, yeah. yeah. No, they look good. Nice. And they're deserved. Yeah, I'll put the Coyote ones out there probably tonight. But, uh, yeah, man. Nice. You have to take some pictures. We'll we'll, we'll do some. We'll flash oh, the yeah. rings together. For sure. For sure. Yeah, part of that ring club. I know Chad's got a handful of rings too. So, uh, but go get it, at Fresno State. Make sure we go support Mr. Young and the Bulldogs next year. Uh, and their camp. And their camp. Yeah, it was yeah. just be after their camp. No, over, whatever. So. Well, then you their camp be there. was last weekend. So <laughs> I hope you enjoyed it if you went. But uh, no, Austin, I appreciate you doing this, yeah. man. Thanks for having me. No, yeah. no worries, man. A lot of fun. Yeah, go follow yeah. the podcast, guys. Uh, Twitter. Instagram at Hit or Die Podcast, YouTube. Retweet, share, quote, tweet, hit me <laughs> up. Quote, tweet, re Facebook it, <laughs> whatever. And subscribe to the Face YouTube. Face it. Yeah. <laughs> Twitter. <laughs> Snapchat it. Hey, TikTok this shit. Who cares? Oh, yeah. <laughs> That's it, dude. BK out there. You get Blake yeah, King. Blake King. Yeah, Let's yeah, go, yeah. baby. Yeah. Yeah, I'm I, in. Hey, I got him in the cage the other day. Oh, he was yeah? sitting off the tee, and I was like, "Hey, maybe we should do this. Who hits? Who's got a better? <laughs> you guys? Yeah, I was you like, have I was to do that stuff. stuff. I, I know. Was he in was a couple in of those. Yeah, yeah, who's, got yeah. the, who's got the best home run thing? And yeah, you got to do. I was it. giving him some shit. You got to do it. Well, keep everything coming. We appreciate the support. Uh, support and uh, that's episode one twenty three. Hit or die podcast. Hit or die. Yes, sir. Hit or die, baby.